Okay. There's going to be a lot of talking in the first part of the video because I want to talk about the different microphones and also demo the sounds of the mics with a human voice. So you can skip to these timestamps if you only want to see the building process or hear the mics compared with drums as a sound source. Okay, have a nice day. Goodbye. Hey! Ugh. That's better. Hey! I've been building some more DIY microphones. Check it out! Wow! Wow! So cool! So cool! So cool! So cool! So cool! So cool! This video is mainly gonna be about these. Super simple electric condenser microphones that I built. And I've got a couple of different ones. Um, This is gonna be so hard. I've got a couple of different ones. This one is a cube. But I thought I would also include some other microphones, some dynamic microphones, so that we can compare the different microphones and different sounds. I'm going to leave all the microphones flat for this video, so there will be no EQ. I will try and match the levels and there's probably going to be a master limiter, but no significant compression. A while ago, I built a couple of these. These lo-fi electric condenser microphones out of, out of, uh, no. oh shit. Out of these old, larger, electric condenser capsules that were made in the USSR, so they are pretty old. And I think I read somewhere that these were originally made for communications, so, you know, telephones and shit. So that's why the sound is not very hi-fi. And then, a bit later, I built two of these. These. I'm going to use a pop filter so you don't have to listen to the pops. And I built two of these uh, little cube microphones out of some leftover wood and some random little electret condenser capsules I ordered from eBay. So this is what it looks like. A while ago I was cleaning up my workshop and I came across these two wood pieces and so then I stopped cleaning and built two microphones instead. Wow. And then after these I built two of these, the first microphone I was using. And these are... Oh god. And these are very similar to the other ones, made from some leftover wood and these little cheap electric capsules from eBay. For these ones I also uh, made the shape a bit round, so you know, because of the acoustic reflection things and that it sounds better, trust me. Just trust me, all right? Uh, then I also recently built this dynamic microphone out of a piece of wood from the forest. And for this I used a tea strainer as the grill, like somebody in the comments suggested. I can't remember your name, but thank you very much for the suggestion, because it is a cheap and easy thing to do and that's the most important thing in life but this is basically the same thing as these as these these older dynamic microphones like this cigar box 57 and this plywood microphone 
But I've made videos about these two microphones if you are interested. And I'm using these microphones so we can compare what the different microphones sound like. Cool. Way cool. Okay. Oh my god. The condenser microphones clearly have a more flat frequency response compared to the dynamic microphones. And that's because of the small size of the electret capsule. That makes the resonant frequencies of the capsule way higher than, than the dynamic capsules. So they don't have the sort of 2 to 4k um, whistling or whiny emphasis in the frequency response like the dynamic microphones do. But the dynamic microphones are more directional and they also can take way louder input signals. So for example a bass drum. You can't really record bass drums with these with these condenser microphones. So the best microphone really depends on what you're recording and what you need for your recording. But I mean that one sounds that sounds pretty good. This one does sound pretty good. But these electret mics are also way more prone to... Is it prone to? What am I trying to say? Uh, m prone. Por prone to more interference in the signal. Because the circuit is super simple and uh, I guess the output isn't really balanced. I did buy some more expensive electret capsules. I think they were Panasonic and I did have some noise and interference issues with those. So I guess it depends on the capsule how well the circuit works. But what is the circuit? These are pretty much as simple as they come. There's only two components inside the microphone. There's a resistor and a capacitor and then the capsule and an XLR connector. And that's it. It needs phantom power from your audio interface or mixer, just like regular condenser microphones. So there's no need for batteries or power supplies like in a lot of electret microphone circuits. The electret capsules are super cheap. You can get like 10 pieces for one or two euros. And as we know, as humans, cheapness is the most important thing in life. Mm -hmm. And for the condenser mics, I used these. Mm. Can't remember what these are called, but I'm gonna write it in the video. Of course, you can't change the angle of the microphone, but they are cheap. For the dynamic microphones, I've mostly used these, what are these called? Ball joint uh, tripod adapters. These are meant for cameras, but but you can get these ones where, where there's a little adapter screw inside so you can take it out and it's it's the correct size for a mic stand. And these are way better because you can, you know, angle them any way you want. And here's the schematic for the electret mics. And it's the same for all of them. The only difference is the actual capsule. The resistor and the capacitor are soldered directly to the XLR connector. So the wires from the capsule go straight to the connector. I drew it this way so it would be a bit more clear. You can cover the wires with some copper tape to minimize interference. But I only did that with these two microphones. So, let's build one of these mics. Get yourself some electret condenser capsules. And a nice block of wood. Cut the wood to size and then drill a hole through the block for the wires to go through.
drill a larger slot for the XLR connector. And also a slot for the mic capsule. Then do a little bit of shaping. Rounded shapes are always better for microphones. And then forget to film you drilling a slot for and attaching this round base T-nut. And put a still image of it in the video. Wire the electronics. Put the capsule in its slot, and you can use glue if needed. Then lastly screw the XLR connector to its place. And that's that! You're done! You've got yourself a microphone. Congratulations. Well done. Cool. Cool. To compare the microphones, I recorded some drums with all the six microphones behind the kit in a row on an acoustic panel. This is not very scientific, but you can still hear what the different microphones sound like. So shut up. <laughs>